Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Engineering Today and hope you're doing great. Let's start with the great news as SpaceX launched its latest Starship and conducted a successful landing for the first time. After several prototype landing failures, SpaceX finally hit the picture perfect this time. SpaceX took the first step of interplanetary travel with its Starship prototype launch. On Wednesday, May 5th, SpaceX's latest Starship prototype, serial number 15 or SN15, lifted off at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time from the company's Boca Chica test site in Texas. Wednesday marked the 60th anniversary of the United States' first ever crewed spaceflight. It's the day when Alan Shepard became the first American to reach space on a suborbital flight on May 5, 1961. On this historical day, SN15's successful flight took a big step forward in the history of the spaceflight era. Starship SN15 originally scheduled to launch on April 30th, but since then it faced back-to-back -back delays. Wednesday's launch attempt put the series of delay to an end. Just like its predecessors, SN15 ignited all three of its Raptor engines and slowly lifted off into the cloudy sky. The Starship reached a planned altitude of 10 kilometers, that's 6.2 miles, and shut down two of its Raptor engines. SN15 then briefly hovered at the same altitude using one Raptor engine. After the final Raptor shutdown, SN15 slowly came down to Earth while performing a belly flop on the way. During landing, two of its Raptor engines reignited in order to slow down the Starship. Finally, the Starship conducted a perfect landing on a concrete pad. Like SN10, the Starship caught fire during its landing. Fortunately, SN15 did not explode and the fire was quickly put out by the water cannons located on the pad. Starship SN15's all four predecessors made a successful flight, but they stuck at one thing, the landing, which SN15 did on Wednesday. We're down, the Starship has landed, John Innsbrucker, SpaceX's principal integration engineer, stated after landing. Starship landing nominal, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted. SpaceX has been collecting data from the Starship prototype testing. They knew SN15 would require some improvements in order to conduct landing. SN15 has vehicle improvements across structures, avionics, and software, and the engines that will allow more speed and efficiency throughout production and flight, specifically a new enhanced avionics suite, updated propellant architecture in the aft skirt, and a new Raptor engine design and configuration. SpaceX officials wrote in Starship flight description. This flight includes multiple upgrades and improvements to address the findings from the rapid, unplanned disassembly that we experienced on the last flight," Innsbrucker said during the webcast. The vehicle also incorporates changes to get us closer to the orbital configuration. SpaceX has plans to launch Starship SN15 for another test flight, but the company didn't disclose any details regarding that flight. It will test the reusability of SN15. Only way to create rapidly and fully reusable orbital rockets, the fundamental technology revolution needed to make life multiplanetary, Musk stated on Twitter. Meanwhile, Starship SN16 is waiting for its turn at the SpaceX facilities in Boca Chica. SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster is also under development. Super Heavy Booster will serve as the first stage for SpaceX's next-generation launch system. Apart from that, SpaceX is developing a lunar version of a Starship for NASA's human landing system. However, this contract is still on hold. When asked how this contract will help SpaceX Starship development, Musk stated, It's definitely going to be really helpful. It's mostly been funded internally thus far, and it's pretty expensive. As you can tell, if you've been watching the videos, we've blown up a few of them," he added. Excitement guaranteed, one way or another. It's a tough vehicle to build because we're trying to crack this nut of a fully and rapidly reusable rocket," he stated at that press conference. If you have rapid reusability, then that's the gateway to the heavens. That's what we're trying to get done. SpaceX might launch a Starship prototype into Earth orbit by the end of this year. Based on the progress, Musk recently said that SpaceX could finish developing its fully operational next-generation launch system by 2023. Let's move on to our second news, based on SpaceX's refurbished Falcon 9 booster. 
another Falcon 9 booster refurbishment, but this time on GPS-3 SV-05 satellite launch. In this mission, for the first time, a refurbished Falcon 9 booster will be used for the National Security Space Launch Program. This GPS-3 SV-05 made by Lockheed Martin is the fifth satellite of its series. In April 2020, it arrived at Cape Canaveral launch site. At present, the U.S. Space Force will complete the design review of a used SpaceX Falcon 9 booster. The Falcon 9 booster, which is scheduled to launch GPS-3 SV-05 satellite, was flown earlier in November 2020 to deploy GPS-3 SV-04 satellite in orbit. The booster landed on a drone ship. During the launch of GPS-3 SV-03, SpaceX also recovered the booster. Only during the launch of GPS-3 SV-01 in late 2018, SpaceX couldn't recover the first stage as it was expended due to government requirements. According to Colonel Rob Bon Jovi, director of the Space and Missile Systems Center Launch Enterprise, the non-recurring design validation of the booster will be completed in the first half of May 2021. The process for approval of the reused booster, according to Randy Kendall, Aerospace Vice President of Launch and Enterprise Operations, was built off the foundation we used for the original expendable booster certification and then we augmented it to account for elements that see extra duty cycles, thermal or dynamic loading events as part of the re-entry, landing and reuse. SpaceX has already landed 75 first stages and several boosters in SpaceX's fleet have flown multiple times. Yet reusability in a national security launch mission is a new experience. Kendall stated, We've only flown three NSSL missions with SpaceX, so we're still building our experience base with them. Let's move to our last news, based on Blue Origin. On the 5th of May 2021, Blue Origin announced that they will carry out their first crewed flight on their New Shepard suborbital vehicle by the 20th of July this year. They also announced that one of these seats will be auctioned for launch. Blue Origin used the recent flight of the 14th of April to test procedures for future crewed flights. The procedures included company personnel playing the role of customers, boarding the vehicle during pre-launch preparations, and also thorough inspections of the vehicle after landing. Ariane Cornell, Director of Astronaut Sales at Blue Origin, said, We've flown this vehicle 15 times, and after the last flight, we said, it's time, let's put people on board. According to a Terms and Conditions document posted on Blue Origin's website, the New Shepard crew will have to fulfill some physical and other conditions. According to the conditions, they must be 18 years old, they should weigh between 50 and 101 kilograms, and their height must be between 152 to 193 centimeters. A technical condition is that they must be able to withstand 3 Gs of acceleration during launch and 5.5 Gs during re-entry. The scheduled date of the New Shepard flight also marks the 52nd anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing. The company did not reveal the names of the people who would fly on the vehicle. Till now, it will make one seat available to the public via an auction. The company will accept sealed bids up to the 19th of May. According to Blue Origin, the bids can go up to $50,000. Then, from the 19th of May onwards, Blue Origin will hold a public bidding process. Finally, on the 12th of June, they'll move on for a live auction online. Blue Origin stated that, We're auctioning off the first seat to benefit our foundation, club for the future. On the 29th of April, Blue Origin had announced that they will disclose their plans for selling the first seat on New Shepard. Blue Origin didn't disclose about their ticket sales strategy, including how much they would cost in the future. We don't have details on the prices for future seats, and we will announce the details of how those future sites will be sold in the future after this auction," stated Cornell. She also said that Blue Origin will take into account the most active bidders of the auction for future ticket sales. Cornell said, We will have a couple more crude flights before the end of the year after the 20th of July flight. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.
hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.